Welcome back, friends. We are starting with the third part of risk regulations in banking industry, Unit 10 of Bank Financial Management. A quick recap. As we discussed the risk regulations for banks, they were standardized by the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision with a view to have proper capital adequacy norms for defining the roles of regulators in cross jurisdictional situations. And regulations had a three pillar framework. So when we talk about the three pillar framework, we talk about pillar one as minimum capital adequacy. We talk about pillar two as the supervisory framework and pillar three as market discipline. So these regulations, these three pillar, this three pillar framework, it prescribes capital charge for credit, market and operational risks. So now when we are talking about the supervisory review process, certain principles have been laid down by Basel Committee. They talk about principle one as the need for process and strategy in banks. So banks require a process for the assessment of their overall capital adequacy vis-a-vis -vis their risk profile, the type of risks they are taking. Capital has to be commensurate with those risks. And they have to introduce a strategy for ensuring that they have that type of capital levels at all times. The second principle talks about review, evaluation and action by supervisor. In the context of India, Indian banking industry, the supervisor is our Reserve Bank of India. So RBI is supposed to review and evaluate the internal capital adequacy assessment process. That's in short ICAP and the strategies which are implemented by the banks. They have to look at the ability of the banks to monitor and ensure compliance with the regulatory capital ratios. And if they are not satisfied with their review, with the evaluation process, they have, they can take appropriate action against that particular bank. So recently they have come out with that prompt corrective action framework. So that's what action we have in mind. Now the third principle talks about operation above the minimum credit adequ capital adequacy ratio. So supervisors expect that the banks will be operating the minimum regulatory norm. And they should also be in a position to ensure that banks have the minimum capital adequacy ratio. And the fourth principle talks about early intervention. The supervisor, the RBI in this, in our case, it has to monitor banks regularly and intervene early to prevent capital from falling below the minimum levels. And they need rapid, fast remedial actions. If capital is not maintained, if capital is not brought back to the minimum level. So RBI is supposed to intervene early. Now, when we talk about this supervisory review process, the review and evaluation process and ICAP. So ICAP is basically a process which is designed, which contains banks procedures, banks measures designed to ensure that you identify, you measure your risks properly and you are maintaining the right amount of capital, internal capital vis-a-vis -vis the risks which you are taking. 
and you are applying and further developing a suitable risk management system within the bank supervisory review and evaluation process this is something which is adopted by the supervisor by rbi in our case and this would cover all the process all the measures which they which basel key principles enunciate and this process will include the review and evaluation of the bank's icap process it will conduct an independent assessment of the bank's risk profile and it will take appropriate prudential measures and other supervisory actions if required that's the role thus the role of reserve bank of india has been defined the role of the banks has been defined now when we talk about a risk management system what is a risk management system which is sound which is effective now this whatever risk management system banks introduce the board and senior management they are supposed to oversee that they are supposed to supervise that they are supposed to approve that you need appropriate the right policies the right procedures right limits for risk management you need a detailed process a comprehensive process a time bound process timely process which identifies the risk which you are taking measure the risk take mitigation measures control the risk monitor the risk and at the same time have a system of regular reporting you need an appropriate management information system and comprehensive detailed internal controls now when we talk about icap it's a regular independent review the expectations are that you take the help of an internal process internal people external auditors for ensuring that you have a regular and independent review so internal auditors external auditors they are involved here separately from the srep conducted by rbi this is in addition to the supervisory system review undertaken by rbi so you need internal controls you need external controls at your end so banks have to ensure that they have appropriate and effective internal control structures especially the risk management process what is the purpose the purpose is that you have to monitor the bank's continued compliance with your internal policies and procedures the procedures the policies which the bank has laid down they are supposed to be followed and you need an internal and external review to confirm that the objective is that the icap has to be comprehensive and it has to be in proportion to the nature scope scale and level of complexity of the bank's activities if your operations are complex your icap has to be very comprehensive and the controls which you introduce they have to be in line with the risks which you are undertaking and it has to accurately correctly rightly reflect the major sources of risk where from what sort of risks you are having they how they will be reflected that is the objective of this icap process then the risk management process has to be periodically reviewed regulators rbi it expects that banks review these this process periodically the purpose is that the process integrity accuracy reasonableness should be ensured your capital assessment process of the bank you are assessing your capital so that process is appropriate the right process you are adopting timely identification of any concentration risk if you have got credit concentration it should be identified in time so that remedial measures can be taken then the data which you are inputting that has to be accurate that has to be complete 
then the assumptions which you are taking the scenario analysis which you are doing it has to be reasonable it has to be valid and the stress tests when we conduct those stress tests to check whether we are are we geared for any stress any eventuality any contingencies so those stress tests should be appropriate and we have got some other expectations from icap this process should be forward looking it should not take care only today about today look what what is happening in the bank today what is your financial strength today it should look into the future it should be based on the risk it should include stress tests it should include scenario analysis different scenario something worst can happen tomorrow something good can happen so what would be our take what would be our position in such situations normal times good times extraordinary good times and worst case scenario also now we come to the pillar 3 pillar 3 talks we just discussed pillar 2 now we are coming to pillar 3 pillar 3 talks about the market discipline the purpose is that you want to complement the minimum capital requirements and supervisory review process how you have a consistent and a comprehensive disclosure framework you disclose information financial information information about your operations information about the risks which you are undertaking so that you are in a position to compare them with other banks and the scope and frequency of disclosures has been prescribed by rbi if you have a group bank has got its subsidiaries so it applies at the top consolidated level at consolidated level you have to disclose there have been some certain exceptions also given you need not for instance a bank may not include its insurance subsidiary in its when it is disclosing so in case of significant bank subsidiaries within the group some exceptions have been allowed individual banks on a stand alone basis they are covered when they are not the top consolidated entity in the banking group and rbi has mandated that you need quarterly disclosures different tables have been prescribed by rbi like you need to disclose your capital adequacy you need need to disclose your credit risk general disclosure about your credit then disclosure for the portfolio your portfolio your holdings your investments they are supposed to be disclosed as per the standardized approach and rbi can also mandate other disclosures they have already mandated so they are to be disclosed at half yearly intervals all these details are available in rbi guidelines now rbi has introduced a new framework which is known as capital conservation buffer framework the objective is that you want to build up capital buffers during normal times you want to keep some reserves like we there is a saying that save something for a rainy day so they want to keep some buffer during normal time so that if you face a stress period you are able to use those reserves the banks are in a position to withstand adverse economic environment conditions and the banking sector's resilience their strength it improves the features are that this can be this reserve this buffer can be drawn down only when a bank is facing a systemic or idiosyncratic stress systemic stress means something which is impacting the entire industry and idiosyncratic would be bank specific only to that particular bank so 2 and a half percent is the capital conservation buffer which comprises of cet1 capital above the regulatory minimum capital requirement of 9% 
so capital distribution constraints can be imposed when your capital level falls within this range if your capital comes down rbi can come out with strictures prompt corrective action against you they can stop you from for instance de uh, declaring dividend and all that this is the minimum capital conservation standard for individual banks the common equity tier 1 ratio after including the current period's retained earnings so this has been defined by rbi minimum capital conservation ratios have been prescribed expressed as a percentage of earnings from 100% it comes to 0% so if your cet1 is more than 8% you don't need any conservation ratio it's zero now we come to the leverage ratio framework leverage basically how much you can lend based on some a particular amount with you like you have got 100 rupees in your pocket how much you can play on that 100 rupees how much advances you can give 400 rupees 500 rupees 1000 rupees 10 times 8 times 4 times so the objective of the leverage ratio framework is that you are constraining the build up of leverage in the banking sector to avoid destabilizing deleveraging processes which can damage the broader financial system and the economy if you are too much leveraged you have given advances more than say 10 times all of a sudden if there is a recession so there can be a problem you may not be in a position to recover your money so the objective is again to reinforce the risk based requirements with a simple non risk based backstop measures you cannot go back from this particular point you stop that's the purpose so leverage ratio framework talks about the definition of leverage ratio is capital measure divided by exposure measure how much capital you have got what is your exposure both the things have to be taken into account for uh, your leverage ratio the capital measure for the leverage ratio is the tier 1 capital of the risk based capital framework so tier 1 capital is taken into account the exposure measure for the leverage ratio should generally follow the accounting value subject to prescribed adjustments you take your balance sheet figures and some adjustments which have been prescribed by rbi they are conducted they are made currently the indian banking system is operating at a leverage ratio of more than 4.5% and the final minimum leverage ratio will be stipulated taking into consideration the final rules prescribed by the basel committee so the final minimum leverage ratio is yet to come so as of now rbi is just taking an indicative leverage ratio of 4.5% and they are monitoring each all the banks accordingly and the disclosure norms of leverage ratio we have got mandatory disclosures annually quarterly they are to be made basel 3 disclosures they are called if you look at websites of any bank you will find that as part of annual report every quarter limited reviews they are having basel disclosures kindly go through that so mandatory public disclosure of basel 3 leverage ratio on a consolidated basis this has been made applicable from 1st april 2015 and this includes the public disclosure requirements they include a summary compa comparison table you are comparing bank's total accounting assets and leverage ratio different types of leverage ratios are disclosed you have a common disclosure template that provides a breakdown of the main leverage ratio regulatory elements and then you are supposed to reconcile there is a reconciliation requirement that details the sources of material differences between banks total balance sheet assets in their financial statements and on balance sheet exposures in the common disclosure template so you are basically whatever figures you are giving you are reconciling them with your books of account and other disclosures which have been prescribed by rbi they are also disclosed under this leverage ratio framework now we come to another type of buffer which is counter cyclical capital buffer we just discussed capital conservation buffer 
which is a buffer to be created during normal times. So this counter cyclical capital buffer is a buffer which has to be created in good times when everything is good advances are growing your business is growing your profits are going up then you should not over lend you should not go in for indiscriminate lending when credit growth is excessive banks are restricted you build up a buffer in good times the framework is that you have to maintain this in the form of your common equity tier 1 capital only and the amount of uh, counter cyclical capital buffer is ranges from 0 to 2.5% of total risk weighted assets and it has to be normally pre announced with a lead time of four quarters credit to gdp gap credit to gdp gap is the difference between credit to gdp ratio and the long term trend value of credit to gdp ratio at any point of time so credit to gdp gap is the main indicator but may be used in conjunction with gnpa growth gross nps we are talking about the counter cyclical capital buffer framework has two thresholds the lower threshold at 3% of credit to gdp gap provided its relationship with gnpa remains significant and upper threshold is 15% of credit to gdp gap and if credit to gdp gap is below 3% you don't require any counter cyclical capital buffer so depending on your performance depending on your actual numbers this would be decided now these are the individual banks minimum capital conservation ratios assuming a requirement of two and a half percent each of capital conservation buffer and counter cyclical capital conservation buffer these are bands have been prescribed by rbi these bands and minimum capital conservation ratios expressed as percentage of earnings have also been defined so first cet ratio band is equal to minimum cet1 ratio plus 25 percent of ccb plus 25 percent of applicable cccb for subsequent bands starting point will be the upper limit of previous band that is how they work it out this is Another example where individual bank minimum capital conservation standards when a bank is subject to two and a half percent capital conservation buffer and one percent counter cyclical capital conservation buffer. So this chart is given working is also given how 6.375 percent has been worked out as the total requirement of CCB and CCCB is two and a half percent and one percent respectively at each band 0.625 percent and 0.250 percent of our risk weight assets they are being added for capital conservation buffer and counter cyclical capital conservation buffer respectively these exercises are included in your books they are given in the rbi circulars also so kindly try to go through the circular look at the disclosures which have been made in the balance sheets of banks in the annual reports of banks every quarter they are making those disclosures kindly have a look you will have a fair idea of what sort of disclosures are made by banks how this leverage framework uh, uh, is uh, used by banks for disclosing details what sort of ratios are disclosed there what sort of information is given there so that will help you get an insight into the entire uh, framework thank you so much that we end up with this chapter thank you so much